We've talked in some detail about the organelles of the cell, what is happening inside the cell. Now we're going to talk about how things move in and out of the cell, and that is regulated by the plasma membrane. So we've looked at the plasma membrane in a little bit of detail, looking at the phospholipid bilayer, but now we're going to look in even more detail at the plasma membrane. Two terms are going to be very important. One is phospholipid bilayer, and remember, those phospholipids have a region at the head, this phosphate head, that is polar or water loving, and then two tails that are mostly a hydrocarbon chain, making it nonpolar. So those Nonpolar tails are repelled by water. So in a cell, when you have water out here and water inside the cell, those phospholipids are going to tend to form a bilayer. And remember, water forces this shape. So that's going to be a very important part of the plasma membrane. Another term that is very important to understand is selective permeability. If something is permeable, it means materials can just move in and out. If something is selectively permeable, it means we're going to select what moves in and out. We're not going to let just anything move into the cell or just anything move out of the cell. We're going to regulate that. So selective permeability is going to be important to understand in this process as well. So let's look at this picture of a plasma membrane. This is a little more detailed than what we looked at before. Before, the picture was just phospholipids. We still have phospholipids as the major component of that plasma membrane. And you can see, of course, that the cell is not flat. This is going to go all the way around the surface of the cell. You see these big molecules interspersed throughout the plasma membrane. And those are going to be some important proteins that are embedded in that plasma membrane. And we'll talk about a couple of different categories of proteins that are important. And then you see these little molecules, it's kind of hard to see them because they're yellow also on this picture. Interspersed among the phospholipids, we have cholesterol. So not all cholesterol is bad. We need cholesterol. Remember, we use cholesterol as a precursor for testosterone and estrogen. We also use cholesterol as a component of our cell membranes. You see these green molecules. Those are cell surface markers. And we're going to talk about a couple of different categories of cell surface markers. One in particular that's very important to understand. And then you see these big, scary, worm-like things that we're not going to talk about. Those are part of the extracellular matrix. We're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about the plasma membrane itself and how this plasma membrane is going to regulate what moves in and out of the cell. So again, this is a review slide. You've seen this. This just shows how water is shaping that phospholipid bilayer. And this shows that even the proteins can be hydrophobic. And they're embedded in that phospholipid bilayer. This shows that the phospholipids don't necessarily just stay in one, one place in this plasma membrane. This plasma membrane is not rigid. It's actually very fluid. And this shows the fluidity. Those phospholipids can move laterally and they can flip flop in that membrane. This just shows you a reminder of the endomembrane system in the cell. So, starting with the ER, remember smooth ER is involved in lipid synthesis. So, a little reminder of the role of smooth ER in this whole process. Smooth ER is involved in, in, involved in lipid synthesis. So, it's going to play a role in assembly of membranes in the cell and surrounding the cell. And you can see 
these all being put together. ER, we have a transport vesicle going to the Golgi, and ultimately those components of the plasma membrane end up on the outside of the cell, fusing with that plasma membrane. This shows another transmembrane protein, and again we'll, we'll look at more detail of the role of those proteins in moving things in and out of the cell. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about two categories of transport across cell membranes. We're going to put it in, in two big categories. One is going to be called active transport, and one is going to be called passive transport. We'll start with passive transport. So this is going to be how materials move in and out of the cell. In other words, transport across the plasma membrane. Two major categories of transport across that plasma membrane. Passive transport and active transport. And the names really define themselves. Passive transport is passive and active transport is active. But not really passive. What it really means, it doesn't mean nothing's happening. What it means is no energy required. So passive transport does not require ATP. Active transport, on the other hand, does. So that's the big difference between these two, is that energy input is required in the form of ATP for active transport to occur. There are a couple of categories of passive transport that you need to understand. They're very important to your understanding of how things move in and out of the cell. And the first of those that we're going to look at is called simple diffusion. If I stood in the corner of the room and I blew out cigarette smoke and there was no other cigarette smoke already in this room, that cigarette smoke would slowly diffuse throughout the room. Those molecules would spread throughout the room without any energy required. It would just happen. It would happen because of what we call a concentration gradient. And we would say that that diffusion is taking place along a concentration gradient from area of high concentration to area of lower concentration throughout the room. And that's how simple diffusion takes place. It's movement of molecules from area of high concentration to area of lower concentration. So from area of higher concentration to area of lower concentration. And we would say that that's movement along a concentration gradient. We're going to erase this for a second so we have room. So this is a, lo a long, instead of against, this is along a concentration gradient. This is important because active transport is going to do the opposite. Active transport is going to be going against a concentration gradient. But simple diffusion is just movement of molecules from area of high concentration to area of low concentration. And the screen shows this. At the top shows dye molecules. On one side of the membrane, they're in high concentration. And on the other side, there are really none when we start off. And over time, they're going to reach this state of what we call equilibrium. Equilibrium, equal on both sides of that membrane. This example shows two different types of molecule, and those will do the same. They will each move in either direction until we reach this state of equilibrium, where they're both relatively the same on each side of that membrane. So that is simple diffusion, no energy required. The best example of that in the human body 
is this O2 and CO2 exchange in the, in the, in the blood between the air sac of the lung and the red blood cell and the body tissues. So O2 CO2 exchange happens just based on concentration gradient. It's simple diffusion. We breathe in oxygen, we exhale CO2. That's because of cell respiration. Remember that general formula for cell respiration. We need to breathe in oxygen and then we produce CO2 as a product of cell respiration. That movement of those two gases is based 100% on simple diffusion. And here's how that happens. Your body tissues, your cells, are carrying out cell respiration. So here at the body cell, in the tissues, we're, we're using up oxygen and we're producing carbon dioxide. So you would expect this cell to be high in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. A red blood cell that's just coming from the lungs is going to be the opposite. We have these little capillaries fighting up against our body cells. And those red blood cells that are cruising by, those red blood cells, I'll abbreviate RBC, they are high in O2, low in CO2. We just exhaled CO2, we inhaled O2, so those red blood cells that just came from the lungs are going to be the opposite. Now, just based on concentration gradient, they're going to do this exchange. So when this red blood cell passes by, it's going to pick up carbon dioxide and it's going to drop off oxygen. This exchange is just based on concentration gradient, going from higher to lower concentration. So now we have a red blood cell after at least the tissues. It is the same situation as the cell used to be. It's high in CO2, low in O2. It's going to go back to the lungs, where it's going to go up against an air sac in the lungs that is high in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide, and it's going to pick up oxygen again, just based on concentration gradient. So simple diffusion is how this all works. You can see an even more detailed picture here of this happening. So here we are at the air sac of, of the lungs. That air sac, by the way, the plural is alveoli. Singular is alveolus. This is the air sac in the lungs. Okay, it's going to be high in oxygen and low in CO2. So we're going to do this exchange. Red blood cells will pick up oxygen, drop off carbon dioxide. Now those red blood cells are going to go down to the body cell where they're going to do the opposite. They're going to pick up carbon dioxide and drop off oxygen. And this is just going to keep on going. So long as you're alive, that's happening. Simple diffusion, no energy required. Sometimes this passive transport needs to involve a protein. And when a protein is involved, it's called facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is also no energy required. It's passive. No energy required. Because it's also going from higher to lower concentration. So higher concentration, I'm just going to abbreviate it to lower concentration. The difference though between facilitated and simple is that facilitated diffusion is going to involve a protein. So proteins are involved. And we have two major categories of proteins that are going to be involved. We have what are called channel proteins. And we have what are called carrier proteins. 
And again, the name says it all. Channel proteins are an actual channel that allows certain molecules through the plasma membrane. They are recognized. And then carriers actually bind molecules and allow them in if they are recognized, if the shape is correct. So here are the two categories of protein. This is a channel protein. Again, it's just providing a channel for these molecules to enter the cell. Remember that these tails are hydrophobic. So anything polar is going to have a hard time getting across those hydrophobic tails. This channel provides a hydrophilic pathway for molecules to come through the plasma membrane. The same thing goes for these carrier proteins. They're going to bind a molecule. If it's recognized, it will be allowed into the cell. So these proteins are regulating what's going on, but it is passive. It's going from high concentration to lower concentration.